Like validity, reliability is critical to a quality survey research design. Reliability is a measure of consistency. A measure is reliable if the measurement does not change across time or across similar subject populations. For a measure to be reliable, it must be clear and unambiguous so that respondents understand exactly what you're asking them and therefore respond in the same way each and every time. For example, on our last class survey, one of the students wrote a question about exchanging sex for money. While she and I both interpreted this to mean that the person had sold themselves, other people interp interpreted this as meaning having paid for sex. This rendered this particular measure unreliable, since in different uses, people might be responding to the question in different ways. What are some factors that might affect reliability? Well, for one, the length of the survey. If respondents become tired, distracted, or even hungry, their answers can become unreliable. Another issue might be instrumentation. Very small changes in wording may change the answers given by respondents. For example, if you have a scale ranging from not at all important to very important, whether or not you have a no opinion versus a neither category as your neutral category will actually alter responses. Lastly, if you're doing a longitudinal study, a study in which you're going to talk to the same people across time, not just a cross-sectional longitudinal study. If you're talking to the same person, being part of the study may actually affect them across time. It may cause them to think about things in a different way that they hadn't been before, thereby making your measure somewhat unreliable. And finally, things like response bias could affect the reliability of measures. If you have a falsely homogenous population, it could lead to some of your measures appearing to be reliable when they really aren't. There are two principles of reliability that apply in different kinds of circumstances. The first principle is stability. Stability is when you're looking at, at whether your measure is reli reliable across time or from application to application, from person to person. Are you applying the same concept to similar subject populations and receiving similar results? If a measure is unstable, it's unreliable because people aren't responding it to it in the same way all the time. They're confused about what you mean. It could also be caused by things like minor changes in wording or changes in question order. The second principle of reliability deals with when you're using an index or a scale. It's the principle of equivalence. The principle of equivalence refers to the fact that when you create a survey instrument that's a scale, you need all of the items in the instrument to be consistent. They all need to be measuring the same thing. There are a number of ways that reliability is explored. The test-retest reliability, inter-item reliability, alternate forms reliability, and inter-observer reliability. The test-retest method of establishing reliability deals with the issue of stability. Essentially, what you want to know is, if I use this measure across similar subject populations, am I going to get similar results? You test and then retest a month later with a similar subject population. And if overall you get similar results, you should expect that you have passed this test. We'll talk about a special case in which rather than having your subjects fill it out, a series of researchers are filling it out. That's different. That's inter-observer reliability. Alternate forms reliability also deals with the issue of stability. In this version, you're concerned that perhaps one version of wording is better or, le or worse than another, that a particular question order may lead to different results than a different question order. In this case, you would create multiple forms of your survey instrument or your scale, and you would test this for reliability across these versions. If different versions of the survey yield similar results, then no different exists. However, if different versions of the survey yield different results, 
you have to consider which is the most accurate way to capture what respondents mean. Inter-item reliability is a measure of equivalence. When you're using multiple items to measure a single concept, you're creating an index with a scale, these items should be consistent. The way that we test for internal consistency or inter-item reliability is using appropriate test statistics. Because many concepts cannot be measured with a single indicator, and you may have to use multiple questions to measure this concept, your index or composite member may represent different components of a concept, but on the whole, you need them to be internally consistent. Here are a few items from the Rosenberg self-esteem scale. You'll notice that even though the items in some cases run in different directions, in this case, one would be expressing positive self-esteem if they agreed with statements 6, 7, where on they'd be expressing a low self-esteem if they agreed with 8, 9, or 10. Even though they run at different directions now, we can fix that when we combine them in the scale. The question is, are they reliable? Are they all measuring self-esteem? In Lab 8, we constructed a count-based index. You can also create an additive index by simply adding variables together. Here are the instructions. We will go over this in detail in class once you've completed your section of the survey project. How would I test for reliability in an index or scale? To confirm that I have reliability in my index or scale, as was done with the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, I would use the appropriate test statistics, such as Kronbach's alpha, which is appropriate for interval ratio level variables being made into scales, or kappa, which is appropriate for nominal or ordinal variables being used in scales. Lastly, if you have more than one researcher recording observations for a study, you want to make sure you have inter-observer reliability. What this means is that each person has to be recording the same thing in the same way. To make this more clear, think about large universities where there are multiple graders covering exams. It's imperative that for an essay exam that the graders all be on the same page as to what the scores reflect. Generally, the way you create inter-observer reliability is by having all of your raters code the same item and then compare results. For example, when I was in graduate school and I was one of those many graders for a large intro class, what we would do is we would take the names off exams and pass them around, all of us grading them. As long as our scores were mostly the same, we were satisfied that we were all grading the responses in the same way. If we saw a significant discrepancy in how we were scoring items, we would discuss exactly what we thought the question was and how it should be answered. <laughs>